Seth, I want to understand reality, and you tell me I have to know what information is to understand reality. Now, information, in a general sense, means things I know or things I should know. Uh, but information has a much more technical explanation. Tell me about it. Well, I'm not guaranteeing that merely by understanding information, you'll understand reality, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, information has a, a, a technical sense, which everybody's familiar with these days, because we deal with computers and smartphones and cell phones and communication systems that break up information into bits. So the bit is the smallest chunk of information. It represents a distinction between two possibilities, you know, true or false, yes or no, here or there, or a little black pixel or a little white pixel on a black and white TV screen. Um, and so you can count the amount of information that you have in, for instance, what I'm uttering right now. I'm like creating in my voice, in addition to the words that I'm telling you, which are you know, a few bits per second or a few tens of bits per second, then my voice and its timbre and its change has a few thousand bits per second. And if you look at this beautiful scene here with the ocean there, the visual information has a few million bits per second. So we can count amount of information. Now, this is in some sense a new thing that we can count information for thousands of years. Information meant, you know, knowledge, meaning, profound information about the nature of the universe, the origins of the universe, about religion. But the weird thing is that in some sense we've learned a lot more about information since we've been able to just count it and forget about the meaning. <laughs> so, you know, all right, maybe it means something, maybe it doesn't, but there are 70 bits. So like when the cable guy comes to your house in order to connect up your cable, his job is to make sure that you know you get a million bits per second coming into your TV, and he doesn't care if you're going to use it to watch Shakespeare or porn. Yeah. So, quantity of information turns out to be a very fundamental thing in the universe. And by understanding the quantity of information, you know, measuring how many bits of information are contained in an image, in a sound, in a word, we can learn a great deal about how the universe is put together. Now, it's certainly logical that you could have a great deal of information as you're defining it, and very little information in the common sense. You could have millions of, of, of pixels describing a, a random piece of art that has no meaning whatsoever, and then you can have a very few pixels showing a very rough image of your child. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, in fact, one of the, the this astounding features of our world is that the number of bits is proliferating madly. Yeah, There's yeah. a promiscuous profusion of bits in the world. I mean, just think of the, used to be the blogosphere, just think of the tweetosphere, yeah. you know, all those tweets going out there, you know, gajillions of bits of information. And yet, how much meaning is there? Well, I, I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so how then does information in the technical sense kind of bridge that gap? How does that help us get to what we call real meaning as opposed to amount of, uh, of technical uh, bits that, that would describe that meaning? Well, of course, this is a very profound question that philosophers have been <laughs> trying to answer for thousands of That's years. Why I'm coming to you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, <clears throat> they've had limited success and I'm not going to do much better. But um, a good way to think of how information acquires meaning is to think of what information does. So, uh, in uh, his philosophical investigations, Wittgenstein has this great example of a carpenter. And the carpenter is an assistant, and when the carpenter says hammer to the assistant, the assistant passes her a hammer. Right? When the carpenter says slab, the assistant passes her a slab. When the carpenter says you know, brick, the assistant passes her a brick. And from the assistant's actions, we infer that the assistant knows what the carpenter means. When she says, hammer, the assistant knows that the carpenter means, hand me a hammer. And so she hands her a hammer. There's a situation where Wittgenstein is trying to tease out the meaning of meaning. Um, and by just looking at how information makes people respond, what information does. So if we look not just how much information there is, but what information does, then we can learn a lot more about how meaning comes into existence. And the reason you can say hammer and not pass me the hammer is because there's prior knowledge that that information relates to in the brain in some way. So there's an interrelationship between different kinds of information. Right, exactly. So the, the assistant has expectations. So like, you know, 
if the carpenter said, said to me, hammer, I'd say, huh, hammer, what, you know? <laughs> so, so there's a context for the information and the information has a meaning within that context. And the way we understand that nowadays, I mean, is in fact about in terms of computation. So a good way of understanding meaning is to look at these actual physical digital bits that we collect on camera, that we go into our cell phones and that get processed by our computers. So um, a way in which we can understand you know, what information means in a particular context is, for instance, in a computation, you know, this bit here means do this. Like, so, you know, zero means, you know, add two plus two, and one means do that. So it means, you know, add three plus one. So zero instructs the computer to do one thing and one instructs the computer to do another. And this is a context in which we know exactly what the meaning, if you like, of the information is. To the computer, zero means add two plus two. But what you need is not just that one bit. You need it to relate to what is in the computer prior. In other words, the, the information is only meaningful in that one or two bits because of what, how it relates to what's there before. Right, so the bit is a, an instruction and the computer has lots of bits in it already that allow it to figure out what it's doing. Um, I had, it was, when I was in college, I programmed a computer where to get it to operate, it had, it had started with a blank slate, okay? And you had to like take these keys on the front of the computer and key in about 20 16-bit words. And then that instructed the computer to read a paper tape. And then you feed in the paper tape, which has these little holes, to you know, holes for one, no hole for zero. And then the paper tape reads in, in 120 words, you could now read the teletype machine. And then you could type in the teletype machine and then like put in some language. So, I didn't yeah. know you were that old. <laughs> <laughs> it was an old computer at the time. <laughs> so so what, what, what is the significance of, of understanding information in this new technical sense, uh, not new, but it's, it's, uh, it's so much a part of modern life, in, in, in going beyond the technologies of, uh, of our gadgets today, but to really understand the nature of, of things. So at a physical level, information is everywhere. So if anything that can be in one of two different states can store a bit, then you know, any atom, any molecule can has, have a bit of information. So in that crashing surf out there, every molecule of water by its configuration, by its rotation, by its position relative to the other water molecules, it carries with it bits of information. Say a few thousand bits of information required to describe its orientation and how it's moving. And then whenever any two water molecules collide, they change and process that bit of information. So one way to think of two water molecules in the surf colliding is, ah, it's just a bunch of water molecules colliding, okay? But another is that what this water molecule does is a function of the information that this water molecule contains. So if it strikes it in this way, this water molecule goes off in some way like that, whereas if it strikes it in this way, it goes off like that. So you can think of this water molecule as essentially instructing this other water molecule what to do. But is this metaphor or is this reality when you're talking about information? Or is it just particles and molecules affecting each other in, in different ways, electromagnetism being the main one, gravity at times, etc.? The way to describe the universe is that it's made of energy. E equals mc squared. Every elementary particle, every electromagnetic field contains energy. And we describe it physically in terms of the dynamics of how it changes over time. But merely by existing, these elementary particles and fields also contain information. You know, they're made of energy, but information tells us the form that this energy takes. So the fact that this chunk of energy is an electron, and this other chunk of energy is a photon, a particle of light, that's information. It tells you the form that the energy takes. So the universe at bottom consists not merely of energy, but of information. Merely by existing, everything contains information. And whenever something changes, so electron absorbs a photon, that information is processed. Bits flip. Now, bits flipping is a computation. So just as it's real to say that the universe is made out of electrons and electromagnetic fields and photons and elementary particles, the universe is also really made out of information and the way the universe changes over time is really a computation.